Former government minister David Birch was well known for being outspoken and a lightning rod for controversy. Nowadays, nothing has changed. A lot has changed since we last talked to you on camera. Well, it's been over three months now with a new uh, party in power. First of all, how do you rate their performance? They won. And so at the end of the day, no one should be surprised at some of the actions that they've taken in terms of their governance. Um, and, you know, so in, in the main, I think that, you know, they're, they're doing pretty good. I think that they've boxed themselves, you know, on some, some pretty petty things um, in the sense that, you know, you can't um, criticize everything that the former government did virtually GP cars. Clearly, you want to manage the use of GP cars and, 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 and have some um, uh, guidelines in place about their use. But you don't cut off your nose to spite your face. And I think that you're, you're going to find, um, you know, a, a relaxing of that policy as you go forward. Because from a practical point of view, what country do you know of where you have the officers in the highest echelon in the country you know, because they've criticized it, they can't, they can't touch a GP car for a minister. But everybody who works for them is driving yes, around in one. And Colonel Birch reflects on his general election parliamentary loss in Warwick North Central to the OBA's Wayne Scott by just 10 votes. It's from the point of view that, do I take it personally? Yeah, I take it personally because I'm the one who ran. I'm the one who done the work. And so it really is an analysis now of whether, and we've done that in terms of our branch, about whether we did all that we could do locally in order to secure a victory. And we think that we did. We were affected by so many things nationally. What I am most pleased about, though, which you would not have thought would have happened in, in our country, based on the noise from the echo chambers, is how smooth the democracy worked. In a sense, you know, we, we were... Transition to power. Yes, we were criticized as being, you know, corrupt and thieves and dishonest and everything negative you could imagine. The colonel stresses that the fact he failed to win a seat in the House of Assembly does not mean his loyalty to the people of Warwick North Central or the PLP is in question. He concedes the PLP lost the election because the party simply lost its way and did not listen enough to the people. One of the reasons why, in, in my opinion, that we lost the last election is people lost faith in us, and we lost our way in terms of our core beliefs and our core values. And by that I mean the current, you know, the current government talks about balancing the budget and, and concerned about debt, and you should be. But in a Labour Party, you set those issues aside when it comes to either balancing the budget versus helping people who are in need. And I think to some extent, we lost our way in that regard, in the sense that people in this country were hurting, people in this country needed help, and we did not provide that help. We listened to the no echo in, in, in the echo chamber, criticizing about debt. And, debt, debt. and of course, those are things that you want to be concerned about, and there are things that you want to try and address, but you do not, in my opinion, balance the budget on the backs of people suffering. You don't. Um, what is the first part of your question? Am I worried about the demise of the party? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You are going to find that people are going to come and go in and out of the party. And, I, and it goes back to what I said earlier about people who are PLP, genuine PLP people. You believe in a cause and a, and a, and a process. And I mean, people are trying to, I know, trying to compare it with the UBP and what mm -hmm. I mean. UBP didn't have no core beliefs other than, other than you know, they, they lasted 50 other than making money. Nothing bonded, bound them together other than power. Colonel Birch holds new PLP leader Mark Bean in high regard, admiring his work ethic from his time in the Senate and declaring Mr. Bean as having the ability to lead the party in a different direction. I think that there's been a fair amount of um, unfairness in terms, of, and that's, I think, emanated from the echo chamber too, I think, to some extent, in the sense that, you know, there's a war going on between the old God and the new God. Right. I, don't, I think that he's bright enough and has demonstrated that, you know, you need a balance of the two. The opposition leader, Mark Bean, he'll do just fine. 
Elsewhere, the Colonel does not hold back criticism on the governor's decision to appoint a non-Bermudian to the position of commanding officer of the Bermuda Regiment upon the retirement of Lieutenant Colonel Brian Gonzalez. Colonel Birch calls the decision a travesty. I think it's the worst possible thing that could happen. I know you're going to get on to conscription, and I can tie the two together. Instead of abolishing conscription, in my opinion, they should just abolish the regiment. That's what I think about it. Well, surely you will agree that the regiment uh, still has a purpose to play of as far as... Of course it does. Of course it does, but you send entirely the wrong message. The only legacy a CO has, the only legacy is to grow an ear and a spear. Tarai Trot reporting for ZBM News 9.